Uh, uh, Chair Khan, good to have you this morning. Uh, we were joined on, uh, on um, CNBC earlier by Jonathan Canner at the DOJ. But let's just start off with what are essentially 13 guidelines. Your, uh, your agencies have been delivering these so-called guidelines, I believe, since 1968. What distinguishes this latest version from the others that we've seen? Well, first of all, it's so great to be here with you. So as you noted, uh, the agencies have issued guidelines since 1968. Uh, of course, our markets and our economy has changed significantly since then. And so it's been longstanding practice for both the Antitrust Division and the Federal Trade Commission to periodically issue updates and revisions to these guidelines to make sure that they're fully up to date and reflecting the reality of how businesses are pursuing mergers and competing in today's economy, as well as the most up to date state of the law. Um, and what is the process from here? Uh, specific to how does this actually impact the law and the way it is going to be viewed by the judges who ultimately decide whether when you bring a case, the FTC is correct, or perhaps when they say, as was recently the case, for example, in Microsoft, when they say, no, nope, we don't believe you. So these guidelines reflect the law. Uh, if you look through the document, you'll see a lot of footnotes to appellate court decisions, to Supreme Court decisions. Uh, we read through every litigated merger decision that resulted in a decision from the Federal Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court. And so this document is designed to make sure that everybody is on notice about what the state of the law is. Um, and we'll be relying. Right now, we, we put out this draft guidelines. Uh, we'll be collecting public comment for 60 days. We're very eager for public input. Uh, we got 5,000 comments when we initially were setting off on this. And so uh, we look very closely at that input and we'll be eager for additional public comments as we um, look to, to move forward. How long is that period of public comment? When do we expect these to be put into actual effect? So the public comment period is 60 days. Um, so at that point, we will take stock of the input that we've received and remain very open-minded about what things would look like after then. Um, but there is a clear need to be revising the guidelines to make sure that they're fully addressing, you know, the realities of digital markets, the realities of how firms are pursuing M&A in the current environment. And so we'll be keen to, to get that input. Yeah, obviously important for our regulators to, as you say, reflect the current reality. But something that is very difficult to do is predict what's coming, particularly in an economy as dynamic as our own. What gives you confidence that these very guidelines you're putting out won't be outdated as a result of changes in the market that seem to occur so quickly? So I think it's absolutely true that enforcers need to be reviewing the guidelines with an eye to the way in which businesses are pursuing an M&A and the ways in which our economy is actually functioning. Um, we're confident that we've gotten a lot of input. And as part of this process, these guidelines are really addressing some of the key issues that we're seeing across markets. Um, you know, Congress asked us to enforce the, the merger laws, and that is necessarily a predictive exercise. As a result, the inquiry that we undertake is a risk assessment. Uh, we're assessing the risk that a merger may substantially lessen competition or tend to create a monopoly, and that's what Congress has instructed us to do. Uh, my colleague Jim Cramer earlier on our, our show was talking about, in having read the DOJ guidelines uh, along with your own, that it seemed to him that vertical mergers, for example, uh, under this administration or under these guidelines are something that is... Uh, verboten, so to speak. How do you respond to that? You know, what is the view overall of vertical mergers, which typically have not received the same uh, level of scrutiny as have horizontal deals? So look, we will look at every case uh, on a fact by fact basis and look at the specific circumstances and make judgments based on the specific facts and law at hand. Um, there is precedent on the books talking about non-horizontal mergers, and so we looked very closely at that. Uh, when putting together these guidelines, we noted that historically uh, the courts have recognized a few ways in which vertical mergers can be uh, lessening competition, uh, including by giving a company key control over critical inputs that its rivals depend upon. Um, but that's just one way. Uh, there are a whole set of other ways that these types of mergers can risk lessening competition, and the 13 guidelines are intended to really lay all that out very clearly. Yeah, you know, in the EU, for example, there's a willingness to accept behavioral remedies for a vertical deal. There's a sense here that the FTC will not accept that. Is that the case, or are there situations where you would accept a behavioral remedy? And if not, why not? Look, we 
consider every matter on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, our obligation is to preserve competition and make sure that mergers are not unlawfully lessening competition. If parties are putting before us remedies or potential packages uh, that they claim would do that, we look at that very closely. But at the end of the day, our job is to protect the public, and we need to make sure that the public is not bearing the risk of a failed remedy. And so, you know, we look at history, we try to make sure we're understanding how previous remedies have worked out to make sure that our approach is fully rigorous and fully protecting the public.